gentlemen, here we are for yet another episode of Unfiltered. And I got a pretty good feeling it's actually going to live up to its branding, right? This is going to be a little bit unfiltered. Uh, as the folks can see, the, the whiskey bottles are coming down. And I got to tell you, the crew is out of control because they're the ones knocking this stuff back. And so if things are out of focus, if things aren't making sense, it's because we're getting bad direction and bad video production. Anyway, no, talent's fine. Talent's fine. We are in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, if it happens here, apparently it stays here, unless you got to go see a doctor, in which case it comes home with you. But uh, we're not going to really talk about that. We do have some special guests. Everybody knows the G-Man and Mr. Drew Cameron, the legend, the icon, or is the icon the legend? I, I lose track. Icon, legend, and, uh, you know, we always talk about, you know, uh, you know, the three experts, and I like to phrase it the two and a half experts, because I got my I got my shtick for sure. But, but you did write a book. I wrote a book, yes. <laughs> my mindset, right? And with us uh, once again, we have Mr. Dan Summers. How are you, Dan? I'm good. Good to see you. And of course, we have Ben Carter as well. So we did a previous episode with these guys talking about why they're here in uh, Las Vegas and what they're learning from you guys. Uh, I wanted to go a little bit deeper, take a little bit of a deep dive here, and get into some meat and potato stuff, because you both have companies. The folks that watch this have HVAC plumbing, electrical companies, and they're looking to figure out, you know, the secret sauce, like we all are, which is uh, the golden ring, as Gary talks about, that 20% EBITDA, and uh, we would all be happy with half of that, <laughs> but uh, we, can, we can chase the golden dream for sure. So what I want to talk about with you guys today, and Ben, we'll start with you if you don't mind, I want to talk to you about... <clears throat> the dream, what you're trying to accomplish, what are the obstacles that you see getting in the way of that, you know, what do you have to overcome, and I'm going to have our experts play Ask the Experts live today, and they're going to help you kind of solve those problems. So talk to us a little bit about what your dream is. It's different for everybody, but I know that you have a very specific dream. I do have a very specific dream. Talk to us about that. I, I, I was born and raised in the deserts of Arizona, and I have been on a journey to get as far from where I started as possible. <laughs> and that journey will land me at some point onto my 60 plus foot solar yacht that mm. I plan on traveling the world in. Do you see the world? Boy, that's the yeah, dream. Absolutely. Man. That sounds beautiful. So in the meantime, you own and run and manage a heating and air conditioning company in yep. Colorado Springs, where I also happen to live. And uh, by the way, I need some service. I can't yeah. trust my own guys. <laughs> <laughs> so gonna, only kidding. Oh, my God. Edit that out. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do they not boilers? Yeah. My guy, okay, well, my guys don't. I got a boiler, so I got a boiler problem. Yeah. Um, but so, so what do you got to do because you got this dream the boat, the paradise, uh, traveling around the world with you and your family, your wife, and you know, man, I mean, you got kids. I do three, three so, boys. So they're going to be grown and out of the out of the picture at that point, off to college and building their own lives or whatever with their own families. And so you and your wife, any pets? Yeah, yeah, two they're, dogs and a cat. So are they going on the boat? Or are they out? Um, Fish food? You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, hard to walk the dog on the Pacific Ocean. So. Yeah. Oh, you can walk him right off the plank. Yeah. <laughs> Shark food. Uh, boy, animal lovers will love this episode. So. Uh, PETA members, people eating tasty animals. So. Uh, so how do you get there? How do you get there? I want you to ask these guys. We'll start with a G-man with Gary. Like, uh, ask, what question do you have? Like, how do I, how do I overcome... From where I am to where I want to go, there's various obstacles, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you could ask the G-Man, Gary Ellis, the man, the legend, before the icon. Icon, I get them confused. Like here you have a chance to talk to the man. Okay. Like no filter, unfiltered, whiskey's talking. Talk to the G-Man. That's, it, it, that's, a, that's a tough one. I have so many questions that I've been rattling through in my head for, for quite a long time, but uh, one of the things that we struggle the most with is, is, is how do we, I mean, how do you really know where to budget for and what to plan for as you're moving forward from month to month to month? And I know we had sort of touched on some of those things a little bit in, in, the, in the past, but, you know, this roller coaster of, you know, woohoo, it's 100 plus degrees outside and we're rolling in dough to... Christmas is coming and uh, I, all of my money has gone away and everything is flooded out as I've been trying to float through. How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you find some consistency? How do you? Well, consistency is overrated, first of all. 
Even though he wrote a book called The Power of Consistency. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Garrett. You undermined my life's work. <laughs> me. <laughs> I will say this. The, the processes of consistency, which is what he wrote his book about, are, is not underrated. The idea that revenue or profit is consistent, that, that's just a myth. It doesn't work that way. COVID-19 proved that. So, I mean, we had a budget of, you know, $10 million and, you know, we're going to do $8.2 million or whatever we're going to do. And that's not because anybody did anything wrong. It's because the market changed. So I, predicting the world is, you know, an unprecise science at best. And, you know, the whiskey probably helps you predict it better. But here's the thing I would suggest. I think you look at your BHAG. I think you look, you reverse engineer your dream. You look at the goal at the end. What do you really want to accomplish? So if that's to sell your business and be a $30 million company or whatever it is, I'm just using that arbitrarily, and that gets you paid how you want to get paid, then you work backwards into milestones. You work it back to the five-year, the three-year, and the one-year. And you literally engineer it and say, well, in order to get to that place, I'm going to have to hit this number. Are you going to hit that number? I don't know. But I know from a budgeting point of view, we always budget conservatively, and then we push the plan to grow aggressively. So we control our costs, and we control how we're going to grow, and then if we have opportunities, we take advantage of those opportunities as best we can. An acquisition would be a good example. Is there a company in your market that you can acquire that you didn't necessarily acquire, you know, a year ago because they ran into COVID-19 problems? So if you buy that company, it wasn't in your budget. You didn't really think about that. But if you've got the capital and you've thought through how to be conservative, then you have the cash and you can do that. So I think what you want to do is you want to think long term first and reverse engineer it to short term and then just really focus on the priorities. And eventually you'll look back and you'll get there. And that's really, I think, what people don't do. I think people look right at their, the right in their front windshield, and they're not looking at where the destination is. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Gary. And I know you were a little, being a little bit facetious about consistency not being. You I was know, totally being facetious. Well, no, because <laughs> but, but you're right because the expectation, and we all like we're going to even out the shoulder seasons, yeah. but that's never going to happen completely. You can you can eliminate the peaks and the valleys, maybe, and some of the the biggest you know pain points, but you're never going to have you know. 400,000 per month every single month. It's going to be 500, 550, it's going to be three. That part is absolute reality. And I think that's what is so beneficial about what uh, Gary and Drew are teaching out here in this three day boot camp because it's about looking at that year, break it down to reasonable assumptions about the weather and the patterns that you're going to face, and, and build your prosperity around the reality of the 200,000 months, the 500,000 months, and so on and so forth. And just make sure that you're covered, make sure that. When things slow down, that you're structured such that your uh, uh, labor will go down with it. Obviously, sales commissions and you know labor and different things should go down with that. If they're if you're on a kind of a uh, incentive based plan where people you know th their income comes down as the business comes, the rising tide lifts and sinks all boats, right? So we got to be in this deal together. But that's the beauty of what you guys are learning out here is because you got to figure out, okay, we're not going to do four hundred thousand dollars each month. For the 4.8 million, <laughs> and it's going to be 200,000, 500,000, and you know, and, and so on. And it's managing all of that stuff, you know, throughout the course of the year. So, uh, final thoughts on that, uh, G man. Just, uh, I love what you're saying, though. Find the dream, go for it, type of thing, right? Yeah. Well, and I think um, what you want to do is try to, especially if you want to, you know, buy that solar yacht. Yeah. And I think I asked you one time, does that have gas powered engines to support that? It's good. Just in case the solar Diesel thing backup. doesn't, yeah. yeah, it's got oh, some yeah. backup. Oh, so yeah. it's a sophisticated machine. So I, I like the idea of you thinking about, well, how do you build a management team that, you know, is as you grow the business, because you're going to have to sell the business or you make a decision that, all right, I'm not going to sell the business. I'm going to go off on my yacht. I got to buy the yacht and go off on my yacht. Either one of those. Right. So you're probably going to have to build a management team around you that creates the opportunity for the implementation execution to occur. And, and Dan has done some of that over the years. And I, I just remember the first time I saw Dan, I mean, that, that didn't exist. Now today he's got a great management team, but it took years. But what he did is he focused on that particular idea as something that was important to him. So instead of worrying about, you know, the small items, he was worried about how does he develop leaders? How does he develop a team that can drive execution the way Dan wants execution to be driven? And I think he's a model business, you know, from the standpoint of how he does it now. Um, it's an awesome, you know, job that you've done. And I think you're in that space where you're looking at, you're still probably the passion, the energy driving the business. And you're the guy, and you've got this incredible talent, amazing technical application skills, great sales skills. 
So your job is to transition from being sort of the guy to do all that to training other people to be the people to do that. And that's a very different work environment, Wally, for a lot of contractors. We're entrepreneurs. We're not necessarily leaders and managers. And so we have to reinvent ourselves. So the biggest thing I would say to you, and I've said this before, is you're the problem and you're the opportunity. You have to fix yourself in order to recognize, hey, I'm in the way, but I'm also the guy that can get out of the way and then train and develop and recognize that people are going to screw up. They're going to make mistakes. Your job is to lead, coach, develop, train, and you'll look back and pretty soon you'll be a 15, 18, $20 million company in that marketplace. Somebody's going to want to buy you. You can sell it or you can not sell it. Either way, you get to buy your boat and sail around the world. And I just ask you one thing. I just want to be on that boat. I want to be the first guy on the boat to crack open the whiskey and celebrate your success. Absolutely. I just want to be that. I want to be the guy to celebrate your success. Absolutely. Right. He Absolutely. can be, he can be beside us. So, so at this point, it's about building people and not the system. I think it's, I think it's build the systems first. I mean, the HVAC system. And then Sorry, build, and then the build, and then build the people around that set of systems and train them to implement and execute. And you're, and that's an ongoing process that never ends. You know, it's crazy. I was just having this conversation with Mr. Andy Mitchell a couple of days ago. And, you know, I've got this app, the Rehash Leaves app. And I was in the studio shooting some content. And he said, Hey, how's the app going? I'm like, it's, it's going spectacularly. It's, it's amazing. He's like, what's, I mean, what's working? I'm like, Krista, Rule, Hunter, Val, Marina that uh, was here earlier. I mean, these guys are just doing such a great job. It really was about, you know, finding the right people. And that Jim Collins, right, uh, good to great, put the right people in the bus. I think, like, I've never seen how important that really, really is until I happened to get lucky. By the way, it was not through sheer, you know, brilliance and I chose the right people. Just the right people came in to my world, and uh, man, what a difference getting the right people on the bus really makes. You can figure out the things, the training that they need or the direction they need, but man, you know, you get smart, motivated, people that don't complain, people look for opportunities and solutions instead of the problem. Man, what a difference it makes, and it really has been amazing. So, you know, uh, building the systems, as Gary said, finding the right people, as Gary said, all of it so critically important. And what's really what's really important is getting you on that Pacific Ocean on that uh, sailboat. So Caribbean, you, know? you want to be in the Caribbean? Oh, Caribbean, right? yeah, Caribbean. Warm, warm water. Well, Pacific's nice. You start there and you come around the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a great story. You probably read it. I can't remember the name of the book and the movie, but these uh, these the, these folks went out from the West Coast somewhere, L.A. or something like that, and they were going to sail around the world. And they ended up on the island of Palmyra, which is uh, I think about a thousand miles or so from Maui, and then they disappeared. And it's a true story. And this other couple stumbled across them and became friends. The other couple wanted their boat and basically killed them at sea and stole their boat. And there's a, it's been a movie and a book. And, but you might want to read that before you start this journey. It sounds like, <laughs> a, that sounds like a really <laughs> twist of Gilligan's Island. That's the most thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Wow. No, yeah. no, this I is pure to... fear. Oh, yeah. Pure fear. <laughs> pure fear. <laughs> Reality. Because there's crazy stuff. <laughs> out there okay. right well so i hope you're packing well i hope you're packing yeah, on that I'll boat pal. That so i i guess the dog is coming then yeah, yeah. Right. Right. the dog can attack them give you time to get your weapon out right <laughs> so great insight g-man as always so uh what questions do you have for mr drew cameron here right so ask the experts live mm, ask the experts live it's an amazing opportunity. So, uh, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so, you know, we, we ride a, a, a lot of waves as we go through this, as we're developing, as we're trying to, to grow our, ourselves, our teams, and all of these things. And every day seems like a new bit of challenge and, 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 and things. How, how how do you, you you go about keeping yourself sort of grounded and centered and so that you can continue to be and, and to do and to move through those sorts of crises as COVID hits, as all of these challenges come at us? It's a great question. And uh, I, I look out at the, the venue where we are and, I, the, and the landscape and I see the Raiders Death Star uh, on the horizon, you know. the, the Allegiant Stadium, because we're here in Vegas. And so the you know, brand new stadium here. And, and so we're talking about dreams, right? And, and so we all have dreams. We all want something different, better, and more in life, right? I mean, that is just humanity, right? We want to, we want to expand beyond ourselves. Yet sometimes fear creeps in and fear is typically the thing that holds us back from achieving whatever it is that we want. 
as individuals and as businesses. And the, and the, and the challenge I see it, um, is, is that a lot of business owners look at it as this, this is a business. And yes, it is, but the success comes from the individuals. It's, you know, the team that we talked about building, right? The good to great. You have to have the right people on the team and you grow each individual on your team and you start with the individual, right? You don't start with the salesperson or the technician or the installer or the accountant or the CSR. You start with the person, the human being first. Check in with them and see who they are. Where are they? Because they have goals and aspirations and dreams too for their own life, right? The business of Me Incorporated, great book by the way by Gene Simmons from KISS. Me Incorporated, I think everybody should read that book because we, are, we all are our own mini businesses, even if we work within a business, right? And if we always, if we always checked in with the human first and got that right, right, and got that relationship right within our businesses, we can get the role right. I mean, I mean, all of us sitting here and all of our viewers, we, we, we know the business and we know what to do, right? The problem is we just don't know where we are and who we are, right? So we are human beings first. So if we started with the human being and say, hey, how's the being? How, how are you doing? How's your family doing? How's your finances? How are the pets? You know, where are you? How's your health? Right. And then check in with them as the human doing. What, what are you doing in your role? Do you have the tools, the technology, the training, the understanding of that? Do you know what to do? Do you understand what the expectations are that are upon you? You know, how can I help you? What can I do to support you? And if we did that and we just checked in and did that with our team, we, we can solve every problem. The one pro the biggest challenge, though, is that we most of us all neglect and I'm going to point right here, and our viewers have heard this story, is we neglect this being first, right? We don't take care of ourselves. We don't check in with ourselves. You know, we, we were talking about a little bit earlier in, a, uh, in another episode about life on the road for what we do, right? It's, it is, it's alone, but I don't know that we're lonely. I don't think any of us are lonely, but it is alone, and it's not great food, it's not glamorous, it's horrible you know, sleeping conditions, sometimes it's bad service, bad food, um, you know, late planes, canceled planes, you know, hotels that don't deliver upon their promise, um, you know, I mean, all kinds of things. But if we all just said, hey, I'm grateful for who I am, I'm grateful that I woke up today. You know, I got, I got a shot today, I got 83,000, 86,400 seconds today. You know, I got 23,000 breaths, I got 115,000 heartbeats today. I got a shot, right? And that's what's pretty cool for me because I get to work with this guy, Weldon, right? And the one thing, you know, he said, the one lasting lesson that burns through my brain as many times as I've heard him tell it is the conversation that he had with his dad, right? And his dad said, as long as you're breathing, you got a chance, you got a shot. And what I say to that, and you've heard me say it, okay? I've called you out on it, right? in a loving way, but you know also as, an, as your accountability partner, to say, show the hell up. How are you showing up, right? Because yes, it all comes back to us. What am I doing? How am I showing up? What does, what does this moment call for? What does this person call for, right? You know, what, what am I seeing? What am I not seeing? What am I supposed to learn from this moment, right? And if we, if we just looked at all of those simple questions, which are actually the best questions, we, we, can, we can solve every problem. We get caught up in the mechanics or the tyranny of how. And I talked about that, you know, this week, um, you know, to several of our, our uh, attendees at the event. You're caught up in the tyranny of how. So I'll close it with this thought. When the what and the why are here, you'll figure out how. How's easy. You'll figure out how, right? But you get caught up thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to get the sailboat? The sailboat's the easy thing, right? Once you decide that the what and the why, and it's not the sailboat's not the what, and the sailboat's not the why, right? There's something that, what in your mind does the sailboat mean to you? Freedom. Freedom. I knew you were going to say freedom, right? I mean, somebody who says sailboat and somebody says Harley Davidson says freedom, mm -hmm. right? And 
There's a great line from, obviously, I'm Scottish, so we're, we're drinking the scotch. I'm Irish and Scottish, so <clears throat> I like to drink a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> um, but the, the movie Braveheart, Braveheart, right, you know, with um, uh, Mel Gibson. Um, and it's also something that Tony Robbins has used at his events. And when he uses, he shows the scene at um, uh, Date with Destiny, every man in the room rises to their free their feet and raises their hand and yells freedom, right? Because everybody wants freedom. Every human being wants freedom, but every man prizes it probably more than any other species on the planet. And so for you, you have to stop thinking about the sailboat and think about freedom and freedom from what, for what, with, with whom, right? And, and I know you well enough to say, I know that's with you and Christy and the kids, Pet, pets are optional. Apparently, they could be sharp. Uh, but yes, when, when you decide that those things are the most important, you'll make the right choices. You'll make the right decisions. You'll do the right things. You'll figure out, you know, the right questions to ask him and to me and to him and 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 to, of course, your your brothers in arms in the industry who have contracting businesses. And I have no doubt that Gary and I will be on that deck uh, probably within the next five years with any one of these bottles and we will be raising a glass to you my friend cheers all right